Hello, good morning. Welcome to Joy News Desk. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokob Limne. Coming up this morning, a new year, a new Ghana. What role will innovation and industrialization play in realizing that dream where, as a country, we can equally compete on the global scene, particularly in the era of uh, breaking world records? Stay with us for a special conversation with the CEO of the Kantanka Group and leader of the Christmas Affirmation of Ghana for some thoughts on this. Also this morning, Chief File at Cocathon hits over 200 hours. We have updates for you as she inches close to the 240 hours target she set for herself. Plus, Vice President commissions a partially completed thousand-seater capacity sports and recreational facility in Nalerigu. We'll bring you more on that. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X Spaces for Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please do stay for details. Many thanks for choosing us. Let's talk about innovation, industrialization, and Ghana's future. How can we compete on the global scene, harnessing our local talents and resources? Also, in a time of breaking world records, what are we doing in the area of innovation, technology, and engineering? Has Ghana a chance in the global market? We are honored to actually host uh, the CEO of the Kantanka Group and a le leader of the Christo Asafo Mission of Ghana. Nana Kwejo Safo. What? Akofena. Akofena. <laughs> For that conversation. I'm very delighted to have you on the show this morning. How Likewise. are you doing? I'm perfect. Great, great, great. So let's let's start with Kantanka. It's been a while. I mean, we all talk about the car that you have to do and it's that <laughs> or the television and all of that. I mean, it's actually great to have you here. How is the Kantanka group doing? We're steadily growing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're steadily growing. We, we started um, with our innovations and research into, I mean, all these cars and all other electronic appliances and also um, now we're into farm machinery as well. Okay. So, I mean, it's been a long time coming. My old man has been doing this for more than 44 years now. Mm -hmm. And we've all been following that. Yeah. Um, the staff is growing, I'm sure. It is. How, how, how is it growing? I mean, the, 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 the things at which it's growing. You know, as I said, I mean, it's steadily growing. We, we are moving at a very steady pace. You know, the, for example, the automobile company mm -hmm. launched about eight years ago. Okay. When it came, when, when it fully launched into the commercial market space. Yeah. And after that, I mean, we've been, in, we've been trying to also outdoor and bring out other um, appliances or other products outside as well. I mean, people have been killing us with calls over our farm machinery, our blog machines, and also especially the TVs, as you said, clapping yep. your hands and all <laughs> that. So people have been really calling us about all these kind of things. But... You know, with research, you need to actually perfect. And with the kind of area or where we find ourselves in Ghana, if you bring something that is not market ready or people can accept it and know it's a good product, you're dead. Okay. Those keep you alive. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, for a very long time now. And one thing I will say is the government, um, Individuals, the people, the citizens have really supported Kantanka so much. Somebody even walks to the showroom and says, how much is this car? Oh, okay, I just want to own anything Kantanka. If okay. it's even 
uh, when are you coming out with phones? When are you coming out? People are, I mean, even T-shirts, people are asking us if you have T-shirts and all that. Okay. I mean, the patronage has been amazing. It's been okay. amazing, yeah. Okay. So um, you, you're talking about employment for people. Yeah. How many people are we talking about? Your staff? Um, we have a huge staff. I mean, as I said, at the CIA place in Winneba, it's the handmade section where we do everything from scratch. Even the engines are being casted at, I mean, everything is from scratch. And okay. we have the assembly part as well. Mm. That is where it's on the commercial market as we speak now. Mm. So, I mean, for a very long time, we've been hiring people. As I said, it's, been, it's a research site and a commercial site. So we have more than a workforce of close to about 500, 600 at Winneba. Okay. Yeah, and that is what is even left every year people graduate from training and they also go out into the main market or world to look for jobs mm. and the old boy i remember um i mean some time ago i had the opportunity to interview him and i asked okay. him are you thinking of partnering with uh, i mean these big guys like the vw's like i mean with the car manufacturing thing and he was like look the white guys, no. <laughs> you, you want to partner with them and they, they would find a way to actually kick you out. So yeah. no, 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 I don't want to partner with anybody. I mean, is he still involved Initially, in, in the yeah, yeah. day to day activities My father is, of the company? <laughs> He's, I don't know how to say, I, I even look older now than him. Oh, oh really? You're <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> it's true. Now I'm, I'm having gray hair all over my face, my hair. And I mean, the job is not an easy one. It's not an easy one. And He's done amazing. He's done amazing. He's still doing amazing. So basically, um, as you were saying, before you can bring cars to the market for people to actually sit in, there are certain international standards that you have to meet, the ISOs. And before we could do that, we had to partner with a company outside in China yeah. and also bring in other partners from all over the world to partner with us so that we can have the international standards. That will be that will make us eligible for the market. Yeah. So we had to partner a few people, not the ones that you already know, okay. but we partnered very good companies that are, I mean, so at times people, uh, sorry, people go on and say that, oh, we see this Kantanka vehicle, it looks like this car. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's similar because if you go to a place like um, the UK, Opel is known in Germany as Opel. Yeah. But when you see the same model, the same everything in the, in the UK. UK. It's called Vauxhall. Okay. So I mean these things are things that I mean one once there are no most companies don't do this uh, full manufacturing again. Most of them do most of assembling. They import parts okay. about so many this CKDs which is completely knocked down. Mm -hmm. And some the other one is semi knocked down. The semi knocked down comes with the vehicle and a few things that have been put in. Then you just put the vehicle onto the chassis. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that is what we've been doing. We've been partnering, partnering people just to get all the standards that we need. And, and the old boy is still involved in all yes. of this? Yes, I mean, I report to him every single thing that I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that's incredible. L I, now I've even lost sight of uh, or lost count of the many items that you're producing. I know you're producing cars, televisions. Yeah. Tell me about your product. Okay, so as I said, we have at Importa, Winnebar, we have the automobile section. We have the electronics section, the electric house. The electric okay. house deals with all these stabilizers, home generators. Okay, and you do also, all of that. Wow. Yeah, and changeover stuff. Mm. And also UPS. I mean, anything that has to do with electricity or... And the electronics part is also what we do with um, the TVs, the stereos, the mixers the studio equipment and all that. Mm. And also we have carpentry department as well. Mm. We have um, masonry. I mean, everything in construction, we do have it. Mm -hmm. Everything in terms of automobile, we do have it. All the sections, the auto body, auto electric house, auto interior, where they do the upholstery and everything. Mm. So, I mean, we have a huge line of product, but as I said, it's gonna be steadily coming onto the market one by one since we have not attached or partnered ourselves with any huge financial, I mean, 
back in from an institution. Let's start with the cars. Okay. How many of the cars do you have on the market? Um, you're talking about SUV, saloon cars, yeah. and how's the patronage so far? It's amazing, as I said initially. We have the Kantanka or Nante 4, which okay. is the SUV. Okay. We've got the Kantanka or Mama, that's the pickup, the main pickup line. Mm. And we have the Kantanka K71, which is a little, I mean, looks like the Toyota Vitz, sort of. Okay. And we have the Kantanka Mensa. Mm -hmm. We also have the Kantanka Monima. But with time, as we looked at the market and studied it very carefully, we noticed that the patronage was with more of the pickups and mm -hmm. the SUV. Okay. So we stuck to producing more of that instead of the other models. Mm -hmm. Now, we have this new um, um, off-road pickup. It's amazing. Okay. I mean, one time... Anytime I see the car, I forget that we built it. And I, I always, ah, can I get one of that? Too? I, I, I'm a car lover as well. So when it comes to cars, it's a bit crazy for me. Okay, so that's, the Kantanka, that's working Obrim Pong. magical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pong, yeah, it's, Pong. It's, it's, it's what? Um, it's a pickup. A pickup. An, an off-road monster. That is what I would say. Okay. It's, it's, beautiful. it's uh, beautiful. I see. And we, I, I don't remember the last time we produced cars, took them to the showroom or the warehouse, and even stayed there for a week okay yeah even during the COVID time is when we had an increase in sales for the vehicles because one time i remember one person said he was driving and he saw a policeman stop their car and he thought we were going to return him back to where he was coming from mm. then he was like oh that's Kantanka. oh pass 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 <laughs> so i think that thing most people saw it from the background so, and they were like oh maybe if i buy a Kantanka pickup do let me pass be the police. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Okay, so the car is actually doing well. On Very the well. Market. I mean, we have a f we have a lot of models with government agencies, Office of the President, and know uh, NIA has a few vehicles. From you. Yeah, yeah. We have a few vehicles in um in Norway. Okay. Norway, we have some in Liberia, mm. bought by the former President Selif Johnson. Yeah. yeah. That, that's very encouraging. Very. And and I see that you've done an aircraft. Aircraft. So that is one of the prototypes that my father started. Okay. It's not something that we've completed. Probably okay. that is what actually, um, that was when the idea of me going to the piloting school okay. came in. Okay. Yeah. So, so. I don't I think mean, you'd want to fly US, a plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll fly my. <laughs> You're supposed to fly that uh, aircraft, right? Yeah, when it's done. When it's complete. When it's done. Yeah. Okay, you'll be the first pilot for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also your television. And I'm so much in love with those ones because, uh, I mean, tell me, how do you turn those televisions on and put them off? Okay, so and, and how did you even come one, by that idea? One thing I've noticed about my father is I think he brings your wildest fantasies into reality. Okay. I mean, the, I mean your sci-fi. I mean, watching a sci-fi movie and seeing certain things the TV can do. I, I think my father growing up had a lot of um, sci-fi fantasies and he's brought all those things into reality. reality. Yeah. I mean, mm. we have TVs that you can blow... I mean, it comes on with just blowing into it. <laughs> yeah, we have ones that you clap. And, and I've seen so and many jokes of it on social media. It makes me laugh so much. And I know with your cars, I mean, I'm just, that's just by the way. I mean, if I have a Kantanka kind, maybe I'm safe. I've packed, locked up my car, and I'm going somewhere. And somebody comes and says, hey. <laughs> and it starts moving. It's, what it's do not I possible. Do? It's not possible. I mean, everything, every clapper. Every voice activation is going to be activated with you. I mean, it's personalized, okay. not just any okay, not voice just or any clapper. Yeah. Okay. So you have that with your cars too? We don't have the clappers with the cars. Well, not has, not yet, but we have gadget. way stranger ones with the cars. Okay. Way which is, which is? I mean, my father once made a car that, the concept is when Moses went to the Red Sea and he pointed the, the rod onto the way, I mean, the, if you uh, point the rod on the car, the car starts. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are you are standing outside and pointing and the, and the car, car is starts. And the car even moves to you. <laughs> yeah, a self drive. I mean, you're not in the car, but the car moves. I uh, see so many things that now these foreign companies do, and I like ah, we should have just I mean registered this somewhere or 
patented so that when they do it, we'll put take them to that. court or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was your idea. Yeah, I mean, all these self-parking vehicles that are out there was done by my father years and years ago okay. when I was still in school. Okay. And, and so t tell me more about your gadgets. Uh, you were talking about the television, those that you have yeah. to just blow some I mean, hot air we, to turn it They are normal TVs, but probably SAU, you, you come and buy a TV and you're like, oh, can you put the clapper in for me? Or can you put something in for me? Okay, so yeah. it's, a request it's a request from people. Not something that you would see at base. Okay. It comes at special specifications okay. or add-ons. Okay. Yeah. So, so, I mean, so people come up with the, uh, that idea yeah, I mean, that they, they want to for example, to like you, their television. You know about it. Yeah. And you want to buy a TV from Kantanka. Mm. So you tell us, okay. I want it to clap. I want this. I want that. I want that. Yeah. And then you do it for... Yeah, they are all special add-ons. Okay. Yeah. And, and you have, uh, what, radios? What other um, Currently, as I said, we... I mean, it's a huge R&D um, base at Winneba, where the whole intention or the whole motive behind it is to get a lot of people believing that we Africans can do it. I mean, that is where... The thing started from awareness to let people know that we are capable of doing it. You are not just a black man. My father has this thing. He says that uh, you might have a black skin, but it doesn't mean your brains are all black. black. <laughs> I mean, that is what he's trying to impact into the youth, into the African, I mean, continent for people to know that we are all capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember one time Joy News was the first TV station that went on a tour with us in Osu. Okay. And I asked one gentleman, that, would you buy a made in Ghana car? I was like, hell no. <laughs> like, okay, so what would you do? Okay, this car you see there is made by the Germans, but it's fuel efficient and I mean, the fuel running is really amazing. Would you want to drive it? Oh yeah, German for the car. car. Near, okay. <laughs> so he sat in, drove around Osu, Presby area. He got back and I was like, do you like the car? I said, yeah, it was made by a person who could just have like, I'm going check my wife, sorry. <laughs> Interesting. It's been amazing. I mean, this journey, I remember those times when I used to wake up around 4 a.m. We would go to Kumase, mm. park by the stadium, and have people come just to test drive the vehicle. Yeah. It's been a crazy journey, trust me. <laughs> and your appliances, you, you are competing with so many brands. How has the patronage been? So, also? as I said, the only product from Kantanka that is out there now is the automobile, the cars. Okay. Yeah, so the rest is only based purely on order. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you are, there are not things that you go to the showroom and find, and you find the, them, no. no. Oh. But maybe big organizations or people come, we want your stabilizers. We have this huge company, we want something that can control power fluctuations and all that. So we and do it then you. you do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so do, do you have some latest designs or technologies coming up? The latest one out that we have out there, you know, my father recently outdoored the combined harvester, mm -hmm. agricultural machinery, as I initially said, and he's looking at doing, I mean, more commercial ones that people can purchase. Mm -hmm. He wants to do a planter as well. Yep. So now, I mean, the focus has been for about four years back, we've been doing all most of these armored vehicles and all that. I think we gave a couple to the um, Ghana military. But mm. currently, we're on agricultural machinery. Mm. Agricultural machinery, just to see how best we can. I mean, he, he, he keeps complaining every day about why do we have to import food? We live in a very tropical area. We can plant, we can do it. Once we have machinery to assist people, I mean, increase work efficiency. So that is where the, uh, the Faces now. Is that why you are into farms? Because I know that you cultivate crops. I don't know what uh, what kind of crops you cultivate. My father started with the and, farms. Okay. Yeah. And is that also on a commercial basis? Yeah. Or? We have the, for example, the Kantanka organic. Okay. When we, I mean, about a few years ago, he started speaking about how food is medicine. Okay. Food can, I mean, do a lot of things for you. So we started with this Kantanka organic farms. We have other farms, but what we normally speak about is the Kantanka organic farms. Mm. And, and I was talking about the kind of crops you cultivate. We do uh, tomatoes. Okay. Um, something they call it. Ubergen. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, garden eggs. Mm. We do carrots, cabbage. 
um, we have quite a number of products that we do. Okay. Haras, cabbage, tomatoes, yam, mm -hmm. cocoa. Maize. Uh, maize, yes, mm -hmm. on a large scale. Because we, every year we, we, I think we donate more than 2,000 bags of maize in December. That I know. Yeah. Okay. And so the rest is on commercial basis. Yeah, they are on commercial and basis. And you have like custom people who buy in large quantities yes. or you just go to the market I mean, like the farmers do. Most, sell to most the go to women. the market. Most go to the, the farm to buy. We don't deal with the market people. We have people that come pick it up and, and they distribute will go to and the market. Distribute yeah. to the market uh, people. Oh, okay. That's, that's quite... Um, uh, encouraging and and uh, some wonderful work that your father and you and the rest of the team are doing there but uh, I know that you're a scientific innovator yeah as a scientific innovator I mean recently we've seen a lot of uh, breaking world's record uh, I mean, <laughs> we've seen a number of them singathon cookathon some is someone is even thinking about kiss and I swear and, 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 <laughs> is going to regret <laughs> allowing this to come to Africa <laughs> I mean what do you make of all of this especially how Ghana is actually uh, uh, taking once this seriously it's putting Ghana on the map I mean full support of it mm -hmm. I mean I, I went to actually look at the lady who did the singathon I went there yeah. And I feel it's an amazing thing that people should all encourage and support. There are so many ways of putting the country on, on the map. Yeah. Some are doing their very best with football. Okay. Some are doing it with technology. Some are doing it with um, boxing, sports. I mean, it's, it's amazing. When I saw the lady, I, I, I still think they are feeding the lady in Tamale a lot of <laughs> Red Bull and... <laughs> Because I don't know. I she's don't even so stand for so almost 30 minutes to do what she's doing. Almost, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, I mean, once it's going to put Ghana on the map, mm. have us known. I mean, the more the country sells itself, we market ourselves, it actually brings in investors. Okay. Ghana is a peaceful country. Mm. So when investors come in, they are definitely going to have all the peace and um, joy to do their business. Mm. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, I hope another one comes on. Okay. If they can do box act on, people should box. <laughs> what if you... I am, I'm looking at someone just saying that they should give him <laughs> slaps for... <laughs> well, what if you were the one uh, breaking the record? What would you do? I am pretty sure my father has broken a lot of records <laughs> in the world. <laughs> because, you know, the first seven-string bass guitar, it was my father that actually invented it. Okay. Yeah. Seven strings, and it's amazing. I mean, what record do you think I can break? You tell me. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it, it will be amazing to break certain records, okay. especially in the field of uh, technology. Mm. As I said, I'm pretty sure we've broken a lot of records, but we just didn't pay attention into looking at, okay, this thing. Probably we were the first people that came up with a... I mean, a TV that activates with a breath or, I mean, a clapper or something. I know there are <laughs> light clappers and all, but for a vehicle or for a TV to come mm. on, mm. Uh, the only person that actually had something working or living, uh -huh. my breath was God. Okay. So if, I, I don't think God is part of the Guinness World. <laughs> so you're still holding that record. Nobody yeah, has broken yeah, it yet. I, I don't think so. <laughs> Anyone that breaks it, I mean, there's an or originator. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's incredible, but I think we would we'll find something for you to break Definitely. one of these days and see <laughs> how that goes. But let's still talk about innovation in the Kantanka Group. Yeah. I mean, how do you see yourself in the next, say, five years? Or um, what's your estimation? So I was asked um, this question five years ago, mm. and I gave an answer. The answer that I gave, I had the actual picture of how I think it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But it has it's gone beyond what I expected. So in the next five years I, I really, really want us to I mean if we are in a few African countries, I'd want to see Kantanka in I mean the whole I mean starting from the whole of West Africa, if we could capture the market and also have not just Kantanka vehicles but have the other products, TVs, air conditioners and I mean, my personal one that is very dear to my heart are the transformers and the stabilizers mm -hmm. for it to be on the market. Because I know 
our stabilizers, I don't know. They don't, it doesn't get messed up. Okay. What I've been using, I've been using it for 22 years now. Oh. And there's not a single day that has gone for any twitching or something before. It's yeah. been intact. So by the next five years, I'm expecting, I mean, more than two or three products to mm. also join the vehicles on the market. Oh, wow. But I'm talking about innovations, actually, in Ghana. Let's, let's look at the bigger picture. Um, what do you think? What's your assessment? Has, ha, have we actually utilized these we, kinds of... We are doing our best. For example, for the past three years, we moved it from the Kantanka, uh, the Christos Afro Tech Show, to the Kantanka Ghana Tech Expo. Mm. Now, what that shows us is giving people the platform to come and showcase their God-given talent. Mm -hmm. There are so many people, I mean, schools are part of it. Mm. But there are people who are in certain villages that don't go to school, but they can do things with their hands and their mind. And at times it baffles me how such people are not being encouraged. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know one person that has that God-given talent and the mother was insisting, no, no, Jai, we, um, well, go, 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 lawyer, go, go. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> no, we have that thing here. Mm. We force certain courses on people that they finish and they are not able to exploit their full potential. Don't you think uh, it's because we don't have what it takes? Because this is somebody uh, telling their parents that I want to be an astronaut. And she's like, how am I even... I mean, this sounds to it, me like it was, a dream. It was 10, can 15 it years be, ago. A, I mean, a reality. It was 10, 15 years ago. I will tell you that don't pursue it. But now, everything is possible. Yeah. And everything is possible. The possibilities... I mean, look at the kind of things we have now. We have... A certain software, we now know it as AI, that can tell you automatically, I mean, everything, practically what to do, mm -hmm. what to wear. And, uh, it's practically taking the human brain out of the system and mm -hmm. replacing it with some computer mind. There's so many things that are possible. Everything is on the internet. Mm -hmm. And these kids of today, it's amazing how they are created. I don't know what we are eating now that is so different from what was eaten before mm. the evolution of human beings is mm. something that i cannot even lay my hands on how can so, we ride on this as a country do you I think, think we're competing uh, enough with you know other i'm not even looking at other what i'm thinking should be done more is the science and technology ministry should actually invest more into the people into the kids we invest more into institutions like Kantanka Shunaye, where we have a lot of people. I mean, imagine having a program at Winneba or Central Region and saying that, okay, this because you guys are here, everyone in the Central Region, there's a program mm -hmm. to bring people who are interested in learning what you guys are teaching mm. to your place. Okay. okay, we are helping you guys build hostels and getting the people to come in. We are trying to find ways and means to regulate and accredit your union or your institution to be able to help kids. There are so many things, or so many places now out there where you finish school and you become useless at home. Mm -hmm. But there are, I mean, imagine someone learning something to do with his hands, electronics or something. You can do something and sell. You can repair stuff and people will, I mean, it will make you ends meet. I, I know that, I mean, I mean, over the period, we've all been worried about the fact that people go to school, they do science, yeah, even engineers, yeah. and they, they, and finish, <laughs> they finish Pythagoras theories and Post all of that. They finish and they cannot even manufacture a toy car. Yeah. Whereas if you go to China, I think um, Korea. No, it's amazing. high school yeah, child yeah. can, you know, put together something. Thank God uh, there is this thing, uh, the robotics and all of that, the education ministry is trying to come up with some interesting things. But, I mean, because of um, our history, a, a lot of young people are not really interested. How yeah. can we whip up that interest in them? So, you know, as I said initially, we have this platform that we are trying to bring all these boys, all these girls, all these people that are interested in showing what they can do. Now, I realized that the main problem they have is finances, mm -hmm. how to buy equipment to do stuff. Yeah. So what we started doing is if we get people like that, that we encourage them, mm. we see potential. I, I can stand by a product and say, okay, this product, if being pushed further, this person can do a lot and bring, bring it on the market. 
there are some you see it's toy you cannot do anything about the toy mm. he's seen it somewhere and he likes it and he feels one to do it mm. but as i said the only way to push this thing forward is government private partnerships mm -hmm. where government comes okay what do you want us to do let's do that let's do that i'm actually doing a few proposals to present to the science and tech ministry for them to see partnerships with other schools that are like tech um, atu all these um, polytechnic universities that are now there i mean just to find a way it's all about making entertainment or making tech look fun mm. so some of us we can get a few brand ambassadors to showcase it let people i mean all these singing programs that we do on tv dancing programs we can do tech innovation programs as well and it will bring so much i mean look at how now science and math quiz is gaining traction yeah we can do something similar for tech and not just bring people that are in the universities or in schools actually recruit people from the grounds people from in the ghettos and all that and bring them on board and once you give them you know people like tv people like to be known people like fun people you bring a, a bit of fun make it more attract I mean, it will be, I mean, I feel that is what we should do. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we, we are in, I mean, the, our technology is evolving. Yeah. And now we are told there's something called AI. <laughs> 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 and a lot of people are scared running here and there, like we're going to lose our jobs. These machines or computers are programmed and they can do ABC. Yeah. Uh, should we be worried about AI? We should advance. Okay. I mean, if something is, I mean, one thing I've learned in life is, Emre Daniel, you have to turn Daniel, as well. Okay. Yeah, so Daniel, if yeah. you're setting down redundant thinking, okay, this is coming, I'm scared, what am I going to do? I mean, you always have to find a way to better your skill, yourself. Mm. How do you match this thing replacing mankind? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? There's no way we can say or get to a point where human beings will never work. Mm -hmm. It's going to be only machines. And, no. So that work that human beings are going to do, if you are in that field, go up the ladder. I mean, try and learn more, read mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. perfect your skill. I mean, okay. go up and notch up with whatever that you know. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that we can actually exist in this AI world. How, how can we make the best of it? I, 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 I mean, <laughs> you know something, I was thinking about this thing yesterday and I just thought about something that, look, now my robots are replacing sprayers. Mm -hmm. Robots are replacing welders. They, they probably do it better. I mean, the error margin is really yeah, very, very, very tiny. tiny. And it's... Something that really, it, it does scare me a bit. It does scare me a bit, especially with someone that is focused and really concerned about creating employment for mm -hmm. people. So I, I feel that something will definitely be able to be done about this. As I said, it's not everything that, hey, hey, this AI is doing everything. <laughs> Even writing essays for yeah. people, writing job applications mm -hmm. and thesis and it's, it's amazing. I mean, and all of that. We still have to better whatever field that you are in because I don't think the AI will come and take over everything yeah, like that. I, I, no, doubt, I doubt they would it, ever yeah. be like human beings. Mm -mm, no, but, I mean, humans are still humans. Yeah. This is something that we fed with a brain. But you have your own brain, so definitely mm -hmm. there are certain things that human beings will have the edge over the AI. And of course, they are, it, it's human beings who actually train them to yeah. be who yeah. they are. Yeah. Your father, I, I doubt if he would ever accept AI because... <laughs> I hope the camera is <laughs> Well, I, I will blame him. Uh, but you, uh, with AI and with what you've done so far, what should we expect? in the next coming years? It's, I mean, as I said, every businessman is looking at profit margins. Every businessman is looking at um, safety. Every businessman is looking at how he can save a bit. I mean, the richest ones are even looking at how they can limit cost on certain things. Mm -hmm. So if you employ, let's say, 50 people 
and the AI would do what 20 of them are going to do, I mean, and do it properly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, and the AI, aside taking or replacing the human being, is also doing a lot. It's actually coming up with so many suggestions mm -hmm. and um, very profitable pointers mm -hmm. that will help you in your day-to-day -day affairs. If you want your business to grow, mm -hmm. it's something that you would actually look at bringing or introducing into your business. Mm. And um, uh, finally, let me ask you this. I know you've been doing a lot of philanthropy uh, work. You've been supporting uh, communities and all yeah. of that. What should we expect in terms of giving back to society? So um, one of the areas that we want to give back is now we are planning on every community that we are in we want the community to benefit from Kantanka. Mm. We want to make a mark. My father has done the impossible. If you look at his story, where he comes from, mm -hmm. and where he is now, it doesn't add up. I mean, there's, I always say he's the rose that grew from concrete. Mm -hmm. There's no way rose can grow from concrete. That's weird. So for it to grow and flourish the way it has, it's, it's amazing. So I, for one, I'm trying to make sure that his name stays. And in, in doing that, I mean, I want to organize award programs. I want to give out to people in his name, do all these technological platforms, create it for people to benefit from Kantanka. I'm even looking at one day having a show called The Next Kantanka, okay. where we can have people also come on board and, I mean, ex exhibit whatever they have to do. We are organizing um, this excellent awards every year mm -hmm. in the church but now we are taking it outside we're making it bigger so that people can benefit from everyone should have a piece of kantanka in their home i mean the next five years mm. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you came. I wish you all the best. Thank and you uh, so much. we'll Thank keep you. patronizing Kantanka. You know what you I should. want what do you in want? the... Uh, is it on 94 or Brimpo? Which one am I Is getting? it a pickup or SUV that you want? Maybe an SUV, which is on 94. SUV is beautiful. That's on 94. On 94, right. Okay. Maybe if I punch it. It's just that. <laughs> what if you punch it, it points back? <laughs> <laughs> that will be uh, something Thank else. Thank you so much Thank for coming. So much. Let's Thank take a you. break on Joy News Death. When we return, we'll bring you more. Welcome back to the rest of our stories and Chef Aja Bless Faila. The Ghanaian cook are seeking the break to break. The Guinness World Record Cookathon has crossed 200 hours of cooking by an individual. Faila, who is currently stationed at Tamale, the capital city of Northern Region, has been cooking for the last nine days. She's expected to end her attempt at breaking the current record tomorrow. 10th January 2024. Phyla is currently surrounded by scores of supporters who are cheering her on. Let's cross over now to Tamale and speak with Joy Prime's Lois Adeyemi for an update. Lois, what food is Phyla currently cooking and who have been eating the previous ones she cooked? All right, good morning, Aisha. Thank you so much. So, Phyla has been cooking a lot of meals and over the course of nine years, I mean, today it's been nine, and she's officially cooked for 201 hours. And she's prepared 144 dishes. So, literally, everybody has tasted her food. We've had traditional leaders come in here. We've had um, celebrities also come in here just to come and taste her food. Even um, the chief of staff was here a few days ago. And everybody has tasted her food in, in the town. Outside, people have traveled from outside Accra, even outside Ghana, just come and taste their finest food. So everyone here has really tasted the food. Even me, I have. Yesterday, I told one of your colleagues that I personally have tasted her jollof, and I can tell you for the fact that the consistency is good. I have tasted since day one, and yesterday I tasted again, and it's, it's, it's amazing. She's doing amazingly good. Oh, you you, <laughs> you are having fun. <laughs> what, what was the reaction from supporters after crossing the 200 hours 
and, mm -hmm. and when exactly is she supposed to end tomorrow? Okay, so we're looking at her ending tomorrow by noon, but her team has also come out to say that it might go into the midnight, so probably she's going to end on two, uh, when it's 240 hours. But for now, um, she's done 200 hours, and as I said, the crowd in here, the people that trooped in just to come and, you know, celebrate her as she is 200, because I said that um, she surpassed all the record holders, and right now she's in a very comfortable lead. So the energy, the reaction from her husband, who has been supporting her since day one, those two traditional leaders who have trooped in this morning, all of them are really excited, and we are all just cheering her on. I, uh, of course, uh, her husband and the personnel from the military have been there since they won, and we've all seen that so encouraging. Uh, tell me about the other people who were gathered there to support her. No, so like, the thing is that even aside the support, um, she has paved way for a lot of people. When I say paved way, people have also come in here and they've made to. We've had vendors come in support and they came selling food, people came selling drinks, clothes, and they've all sold out thanks to the cookathon. So she's open doors for people to make money. But also the support from the people. I mean it's nine days and you think that after day three people will grow well weary and will not really want to come here. But they have shown up and shown out. Tamale has really done well. People have come in from dawn to dusk. People are supporting her. As she said the soldiers have been here since they want to carry her on. And I mean, everyone is here. Everyone is here. Honestly, I'm said the story, but if you're in Tamani and you're not here, you're very, you're missing out because everybody is here and everyone is supporting her as, you know, put Tamani and Ghana on the map. Lois Ademi is a reporter with Joy Prime. Thank you for the update. Uh, Faila is supposed to finish with a coca tone tomorrow. We wish her all the best and she has our support. Uh, in doing this. Let's get on to other stories. A thousand-seater capacity sports and recreational facility has been commissioned in Nalerigu in the East Mampusi municipality and the capital town of the northeast region. The new facility is made up of an astroturf, changing rooms, a VIP stand, and offices for administrative staff and managers of the facility. Vice President Dr. Mahamad Baumia, who commissioned the sports complex, said it would help the development of sports, in particular football, in that area. Elias Satanko has more. After the initial postponement following confusion at home over the Boku chieftaincy dispute, the Vice President Dr. Mahamud Baumia returned over the weekends to Nalirugu, the northeast regional capital to commission a new astroturf for sporting and recreational activities in the East Mampresi municipality. According to Joy News sources, the initial arrangement to commission the facility on the 28th of December was abrogated after an arrangement could not be reached between the office of the Vice President and the executives of the Mampresi Youth Association over the presence of the Nairis and Stol Bokunaba at the event grounds. Dr. Baumia was accompanied by the Minister for Youth and Sports, the National Chairman of the ruling party, and several other dignitaries of the party. It was the third of such facilities to be commissioned into operation in the region since the coming into power of the government. The facility comes with a standard football pitch that can be utilized for even national matches, flashlight for nine-time activities, 1,000 capacity spectator stands, changing rooms furnished with water and sanitation facilities, offices for managers of the facility, and a public washroom. The facility was constructed after the youth of Nalirgu mounted a strong protests against the vice president and the regional minister after the construction of a second astroturf in Waliwali. Commissioning the project, the vice president, after inspecting the auxiliary facilities, said the new infrastructure would help in the development of sports in the region. I'm very happy with the work. Um, the facilities are first class, and I just hope that we maintain them as such as we go forward. But I'm ha a happy man today, and I'm very impressed with the work that has been done. I think that it will be a facility that will help sports in and particularly football uh, in 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 Alerugu Gambaga and, and its environment. The facility has been named after Nasheriga, 
a late overlord of Manprugu. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Mustafa Youssef, also said the facility will facilitate the development of grassroots sports whilst playing out the achievement of this government in the development of sports nationwide. Under His Excellency Nana Adudan Kwaku Fuadu, when it comes to sports infrastructure, there's no any government since independence that can match his record in terms of sports infrastructure and sports development. So having done all these sports uh, facilities, now the focus is now uh, grassroots sports development. We are now going to have district level sports competitions, then we move to the regional level, to the national level, so that we can develop talent at the grassroots. The minister further announced his pledge to support the fast-growing local football clubs in the region. He, however, called on the local managers of the facility to strictly adhere to the dictates contained in the maintenance manual to ensure the facility is always fit for purpose. There is going to be a committee set up, and the committee, the chief, and the Nairi will have a rep on the committee. You have also the assembly having a rep. The regional minister will have a rep. The community, the youth, will also have a rep on the committee. And this committee will ensure that they follow the guidelines on the maintenance manual so that we can use to maintain this facility. We can put in huge investment like this, then at the end of the day, we don't maintain it well and we have to look for money to come and renovate it again. According to the details of the contract, a wall will be constructed to protect the facilities. As it stands, only the football pitch is fenced with wire mesh. This is the first phase of the project and going forward, the second phase will look at getting a fence wall so that we can, there can be security. The contractor, Robert Tete Coleman, also could not tell the exact amount of money spent so far on the project, saying he will be able to provide the financial details after the end of the year to begin second phase. Elias Sutanko from Nalirgu for Joy News. And back here in Accra, former chairman of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Kwejo Farijan, has cautioned the Electoral Commission against imposing changes in the electoral system on political parties. Speaking at the fourth Constitution Day lecture, he urged the Electoral Commission to rather view IPAC as a convenient forum for effecting changes in the electoral system with a view of achieving consensus. Stanley Ni Blewu has more. Citizens drawn from the academia, government, and the general public converged at the auditorium of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, to participate in the fourth Constitution Day lecture organized by the One Ghana Movement. The lecture sought to reflect on Ghana's adoption of a constitutional rule and democracy after experiencing three coup d'etats that led to the overthrow of three of Ghana's elected leaders. Former chairman of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Kojo Aferijan, underscored the relevance of the country enjoying three decades of uninterrupted democracy under the fourth Republican dispensation, but warns key actors in Ghana's electoral system to guard against circumstances that has the potential of stampeding it. He cautioned the Electoral Commission not to impose decisions concerning electoral reforms on the political parties, but strive to reach consensus. The Electoral Commission must view the Inter-Party Advisory Committee, IPAC, as a convenient forum for discussing changes to our electoral practices. Irrespective of whether the intended change originates from the Commission or the parties. The reason is that it is not good practice to foist changes in electoral practices, in electoral practices on important stakeholders like political parties. It is prudent to discuss any intended changes thoroughly at IPAC meetings with a view to achieving consensus. If consensus is achieved, the IPAC then becomes a convenient vehicle for disseminating the changes to the electorate. Dr. Ferjan also bemoaned the dominance of the monetary inducement in the country's electoral system, adding it could have negative implications for the country's fledging democracy. In days gone by, whatever vote buying or vote selling there was took place in secrecy. Not so these days. What we have now looks like an open market 
where candidates can freely buy votes and citizens citizen can freely sell their votes in broad daylight while we all look on seemingly unconcerned. But it is a shameful spectacle because vote buying and vote selling are unlawful and they undermine two important principles that underpin our democracy. Vote buying undermines the idea that we choose our leaders out of our free will. And vote selling undermines the idea that we hold our elected leaders accountable through elections. In reviewing the lecture, former Attorney General and the former President John Mahama Marietta Brew appear upon expressed unhappiness about some decisions already taken by the Electoral Commission regarding the upcoming December 7 general elections. The decision by the Electoral Commission to close the poll at 3 p.m. instead of the usual 5 p.m. and not to use indelible ink during the election. And these two decisions is already causing a ruckus and a stir all over. Changes to the electoral process are bound to happen, but these should prioritize inclusivity, protecting the right to vote, accessibility to the voting process, transparency, and fairness in counting the votes and the declarations. MP for Sikado Ketan and former Attorney General and the President Kufo Jogati urged for checks and balances among the three organs of government. He argued that parties who resort to courts for redress of electoral grievances without justified causes must be made to suffer the consequences. People who don't have any basis for bringing election petitions must be punished. Three of us agreed. We all said without exception that such people must be mortared in what is called heavy and punitive costs. If you have no basis for bringing an electoral petition, don't bring it. I added that such a person is a threat to democracy, is undermining democracy. I understand that they do it to keep their food soldiers happy. I understand that they do it so that they continue getting finance. Such a person should be banned from taking part in elections for a period. You are not fit to be a public officer. If there's a case in court which is not frivolous, no, why? You should go to court. But if you know that you have no basis and you decide to go to court, then the court should punish you. And as I wrap up the bulletin this morning, my name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjohnline.com. There's more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. See you again at 12.